In this video, we're going to talk about how to compute Heisenberg uncertainty for position and momentum. So remember, the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics means that we cannot measure position and momentum for a particle simultaneously with infinite precision. Instead, Heisenberg uncertainty limits us such that the uncertainty in our position times the uncertainty in our momentum is always going to be greater than or equal to h over 4 pi, where h is Planck's constant which is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And momentum P, you may recall, is given by mass times velocity. And when we're talking about the uncertainty in momentum, we're typically, in this context, talking about the uncertainty in the speed rather than the mass, not worrying about any uncertainty in the mass. So we're going to say that the uncertainty in momentum is equal to m times delta v. Now, it is important to remember when we're doing these sorts of problems that this is just the minimum uncertainty that's allowed by the universe. In practice, we'll have other uncertainties stemming from our experimental technique and so on that are going to often make these larger. But if we had, even if we had perfect experimental technique, we could never exceed this minimum uncertainty. The product structure of this means that as our uncertainty in x gets smaller, our uncertainty in p has to get larger or vice versa. So let's do an example of this. Let's say we have a 2.8 gram ping pong ball and we measure its position with a red laser at 675 nanometers. And so that's, and let's say we get an uncertainty that's about that size, so 675 nanometer uncertainty in its position. We could then ask, what is the uncertainty in the speed? So to solve this problem, it's going to be easiest if we first convert everything to SI units. So I'm going to want to convert my mass from grams to kilograms, and I'm going to want to convert my nanometers to meters. So for example, here, I'm going to do 675 nanometers times 10 to the minus 9 meters over 1 nanometer, because there's 10 to the 9th nanometers in a meter. And so I get 6.75 times 10 to the minus 7 meters for the uncertainty in position. For my 2.8 gram ball, I have 2.80 grams times 1 kilogram per 1,000 grams. And so I get 0 0.00280 kilograms. So now I have these in SI units. And as an aside, I'm going to remember that joules has units of kilograms, meters squared, per second squared. And that's going to be helpful when we want to later make sure that all our units cancel. So now we're ready to go ahead and try and figure out the uncertainty in our velocity. So first, I'm going to solve for the uncertainty in P. And that is going to be equal to H over 4 pi times the uncertainty in x. Then, because we're actually interested in the uncertainty in velocity, I want to go ahead and s replace delta p with m delta v and solve for delta v. So I'm going to set this equal to m delta v and then solve for delta v and get delta v is equal to h over 4 pi mass times the uncertainty in x. So that's my working expression. Now it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers. So I'm going to plug in Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in, instead of joules, I'm going to write the units out. So I'm going to get kilograms meter squared per second squared times seconds. And in the, no the denominator, I have 4 pi 0 0.00280 kilograms, and I have 6.75 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. I can do some unit cancellation. Kilograms are going to cancel. I cancel one factor of seconds and one factor of meters, and I'm going to be left with meters per second. If I plug all these numbers into my calculator, I get that the uncertainty delta v is equal 
to 2.79 times 10 to the minus 26 meters per second. So that's tiny. And this makes sense. Even if we get a very, very precise measurement of position, which is going to maximize the uncertainty in the momentum, for a macroscopic object like a ping pong ball, the uncertainty is going to be tiny. If we want to have uncertainties that actually matter, we need to go down to the macroscopic, or sorry, the microscopic realm where we have tiny masses and therefore the uncertainties in position and momenta will actually be relevant. They have to end up having products that are on the order of 10 to the minus 34. And so it's only when we're at the scale of atoms and molecules that the uncertainty really matters. And that's why we don't experience uncertainty in our everyday lives.